This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello and welcome to the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. I'm Raffaello Di Furia and I am here with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. Hey there, Marco. How are you doing? Hey, Raffaello. Good to are you. Good, good. So today, this is our first inaugural episode of this this podcast here. The the goal of which, uh, for those of you who are watching and listening, is to be a guide for those of you who are interested in making that move to Italy or purchasing uh, uh, some holiday property here in Italy. And the intention is so that you can listen or watch this while you're at work, on your lunch break, or on your ride home from work, and just uh, little bite-sized episodes with all all of the basics that you need to know about how to go through the process of purchasing property here in Italy. So Marco, maybe let's get started from the very, very, very beginning. What is the first thing that a person would need to actually get started on all of this? What is the basic foundation of what they need? The very first thing that people need to purchase properties in Italy is an Italian tax code, which in Italian is called Codice Fiscale. The Italian tax code can be obtained through an Italian consulate abroad or directly from Italy if you are in Italy, even if you are visiting in Italy. So the Italian tax code can be obtained quite easily and there are no residency requirements. And what is actually the, the necessary part? Why, why is having a tax code here necessary for this process? The tax code is used to identify the parties of the contract, so the buyer and the seller. It's like a social security number for our American audience. Um, they're familiar with that. So the tax code is assigned, it's, it's an alphanumeric number that is assigned to people based on their name, last name, place of birth, and date of birth. And it's used to identify the person. Are there any prerequisites or anything that you need ahead of time to be able to get an Italian tax code? No, not really. Uh, you can get it very easily through a consulate or through any Italian uh, revenue office, the, the, the local offices. And a lot of people ask me whether having a tax code automatically implies having to pay taxes in Italy, even taxes on taxes on income. And that's, of course, not the case. So having a tax code does not mean that you have to pay taxes in Italy. You pay taxes on the property that you buy, purchase taxes and, and annual taxes, but we can talk about that uh, later. But having a tax code doesn't mean that you have to do your tax returns in Italy, of course. Mm. And so then, what would the next step be once you have your tax code? Where would you go from there? So another very important thing to have, even if it's not really necessary, but it's highly advisable to have, is an Italian bank account. So you could potentially purchase properties in Italy and use a foreign bank account or even an international online bank account. But that makes things a lot more difficult. So generally, people choose to open an Italian bank account, which makes any kind of transactions involved in this process much easier. Uh, in what ways does it really benefit the, the person purchasing the property to have that Italian bank account here? Okay, so to mention one thing that, like the first thing that comes to my mind is when you pay the seller, for example, if you're the buyer, you attend, like when you attend the meeting with the notary, so at, at the closing, you normally exchange certified checks with the seller, meaning you hand the checks to the notary and the notary gives the checks to the seller. And of course, giving the checks, the checks to the seller is uh, based upon you becoming the, the legitimate owner. So you don't want to do a wire transfer before the meeting with the, 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 own, the notary because you're not even yet the owner of the property. So you want to wait until you meet with the notary to exchange 
the checks, the certified checks, the cashier's checks with the buyer. So having an Italian bank account facilitates you because you can get certified checks by an Italian bank. Uh, so in in any case, you would not want to uh, make a bank transfer even from an American account or an Italian account. You it's you need to have those cashier's checks for your own protection, it sounds like. Exactly. So in America, people normally use escrow accounts. Those are not very common in Italy. So the, the, the standard practice is to give a cashier's check to the buyer. Um, and are those difficult to get at the bank or is it pretty easy to get? No, that's very easy. You just show up at the bank and you request a cashier's check and they they give it to you. For somebody who might be coming from the United States and familiar with uh, escrow accounts and escrow agents, this whole system that's in place there, instead of giving over a check, is there anything else in Italy that exists that's somewhat comparable? Yes, some notary will have a dedicated bank account where the seller, uh, where the buyer can wire the money and the funds will be released to the seller only when the contract, the final contract is finalized. So these bank accounts that some notary notaries have, they basically function like an escrow account, but not all of the notaries that we have in Italy will even know that that's a possibility. So from what you're saying, it sounds like that's a very unusual way of taking care of this sort of thing. Exactly. It's becoming a little bit more common in, in the, the recent year has been becoming more common, but still I'd say it's not a standard practice. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've heard about people from time to time being interested in purchasing a property just in cash. Is that an option or is that not advisable? So you mean cash like a Hard bag? cash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's not really possible in Italy. There are uh, basically regulations that say, and that's something that happens in Italy, n not in other European countries, definitely not in, in, in any country of the world, but Italy is very famous because um, the government wants to control the exchange of cash between parties so they want you to use other means different from handing cash to another person of course up like when the sum exceeds a certain amount so right now buying a property in cash it's not even legally possible mm, I it see. used to be in the past and you've been mentioning about working along with a notary is that a necessary part of the process or are there any alternatives that you can use? Yes, when purchasing real estate in Italy, you must use a public notary. So the the way the law works is basically the, the, the notary is a public figure in Italy that certifies the transaction. So the notary will verify at the time of the closing, that the property is free of any, the property rights are, are not limited, so the property is free of any limitations, liens, or other um, limitations whatsoever. And only if that condition is met, the notary is legally allowed to transfer the, to, to, to certify the contract and, and allow the seller to transfer the ownership right on ownership rights onto the buyer. So I take it then that's where you at Italian real estate lawyers come into play uh, to be able to help your clients and act on their behalf uh, during that part of the process when dealing with the notary. Exactly. Not only we can assist the buyer when the buyer is in front of the notary, but we can also represent represent the buyer. So there is no need for the buyer to actually show up at the meeting with the notary and of course also we assist with the preparation of all the paperwork that is necessary for the final contract of sale and then what about actually finding the property is that something that you also assist your clients with yes so our firm not only includes attorneys but also includes real estate experts 
So we have a lot of clients who ask us to help them locate a suitable property for them. And that's something that we can do. So we can help them, first of all, decide in which area they want to invest their money in. And then once we have identified an area, we can help them identify a property that they like. And uh, so how is that that you actually go about finding this property and helping your clients to uh, find the, 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 the appropriate property for them? There are several databases that are generally only in Italian where these properties can be found, but not all of the properties are on these databases. So in some cases, we have to use our local connections to see what's on the market. So since you are helping your clients to find the property and to be able to properly purchase the property legally, does that mean that then there is the need to have a real estate agent as part of the process as well? Or is it possible to kind of write them out of the process? Exactly. When people choose our firm to represent them and help them locate a property, it is possible to not having to use a real estate agent so we can we have access to the properties that are on the market that are being sold directly by the owners but of course when the property that the person is interested in is being sold through a real estate agent the real estate agent will have to be involved anyway i think this is a great place to leave it off for this time because there is still a lot more ground to cover but again we wanted these to be a little bit on the shorter side so that they can be part of your lunch break coffee break whatever it may be your drive home uh, and also for those of you who are interested in the services of marco and his associates you can go to italianrealestatelawyers.com and for those of you who may be interested in the process of Italian citizenship Marco and I also host the Italian Citizenship Podcast where you can hear more information about Italian citizenship through descent, through marriage and through a legal case anyway thank you so much for joining us for this first episode of the Italian Real Estate Podcast we look forward to seeing you all next time see ya thank you